Okay. So last class we started factoring, right? And uh, we looked at GCF, and we ended class with these weird problems where we were pulling out bin uh, binomials out of things. So let me just give you an example just to get us going again, where we stopped last time. Something like... Uh, like this. If the instructions here are to factor, right, then what we noticed here was that both of our, well, we kind of look at it like we have two things. We have two, almost like two terms here and here, right? Both of those have something identical in both. They, have the, they both have the 2x plus 1. So that can be our GCF here, right? So we can factor that out. And when we factor it out, we'll have 2x plus 1 in parentheses. That's our GCF. Is the entire 2x, did I say plus 1? Yeah, it is plus 1, that's why. And then what we did is we put a set of parentheses, and we left enough space in this parentheses for a what? Binomial in this case, because there were two terms. And this one's a little tricky. What would go in here? X and then minus and 1. You have to be careful with that because there is a 1 out there, and you have to have something there, right? So X minus 1 would go there, and that would be the factored form. A couple of things to remember. You have to have parentheses here, right? Make sure you have those parentheses. If you don't, it's completely wrong because think about it. If you put 2X plus 1 times x minus 1, the only thing actually being multiplied here is 1 times this. The 2x is not part of that. It's kind of sitting here by itself. Here forces you to do like a foiling or, or multiplying through expanding. So don't, don't forget that parentheses when, you, when your GCF uh, has two terms like that. Okay, so that's where we ended last class, right? We okay with that? Uh, today, we're going to expand on this a little bit more, and we're going to look at something like, where should we start? How about y minus 4xy plus 3 minus 12x. Now, let's start noticing things when we are doing factoring. Of course, the instructions here are to factor. What I want you to always think of before you start factoring is just do a quick mental check on how many terms you have. All right? So in this case, we have, what, one, two, three, four terms, right? Just keep that in mind. We have four terms. Now, the first step for factoring anything is always GCF always trying to find greatest common factor. So let's look at these. Let's look at numbers. Is there a number that goes into all of the numbers that appear here? And remember, there's a 1 in front of that y, right? So the only number that goes into 1, 4, 3, and 12 is 1, right? The only common factor. So I, in my GCF, I don't have any numbers, right, other than 1. How about my, let's start with the y's since I have a y here. Do I have y's in every term? No. Do I have x's in every term? No. So I don't have a GCF. And yet, in last class, we pretty much at this point would stop and we say, you know, we can't factor it. Well, in, that's, it's going to be a little different now. Okay, that's, that's what we need to look at. When you have four terms and you've pulled a GCF out, which we didn't have to here, but after you've done GCF, you look at the four terms, and you try to do what's called grouping. All right, that's what I'm going to show you today. So I'm going to now say, since there are four terms, we will try, and I'll underline, underline try, what's called grouping. 
so that's our new method for today so far, all right? We had, we had the uh, GCF from last class, and today we're going to talk about grouping. But grouping only works if you have four terms, right? If this were three terms, I wouldn't consider grouping at all. If it were only two terms, I wouldn't consider grouping. If it were five terms, I wouldn't consider t grouping. It's only with four terms that you do grouping, all right? Not six, okay? So four terms, we're going to look, look for grouping. Um, so here's how grouping will work. What I want you to do is I want you to rewrite the problem here. There are so many different ways to show students how to group, how to use grouping. The way I do it, I hope you'll, you'll follow it, you'll pick up on it, and it'll seem somewhat okay. We're going to look at taking the first two terms, okay, the, only the first two, and we're going to separate them or group them with each other, and the second two terms and group them with each other. That's why they call it grouping. So the way I do it is I tell my students just draw like a slash through, split the, two, split the four terms, Make sure you put your slash, your split, right before this sign. So whatever your third term is, like our third term is positive 3, you want that slash before the plus. If it were minus 3, you put it before the, the minus, okay? So right after the second term is where you put your slash. With me? Now, I want you to act like um, this part's not even there, okay? Just act like it's not there and look at the first two terms only. Does the, do the first two terms have a GCF? Y, right? The first two terms have a Y. So I'd like for you to do a little mini uh, factoring GCF just on those two. So you would take the Y, the Y would come out in front, right? So I'd write Y. Then I'd need a parentheses with enough for how many terms? Two, because I'm completely ignoring all this over here. What would go inside there? Careful. You need, to be able, you need to be able to get two terms, right? So what do you multiply y by to get y? What? W one, right? Because you want it to be itself. Now, I need to put the one this time because it's the only thing that's going to appear, right? So I need y times one. And then over here to turn y into uh, negative 4xy, the only thing I'm missing is the negative 4x, right? So I put minus 4x. That okay? Now, I shouldn't have. I should have scratched that out and told you don't scratch it out on your page. Did you scratch it out? Okay, because I want you to come back now and look at that again. And just now on those two terms, ignoring everything we did here, look at these two and see if there's a GCF. Is there a GCF here? How about numbers? Is there a number that goes into both 3 and 12? 3. How about X's? I don't have X in both terms, right? So I have a 3 as a GCF. I'm going to put that 3 right here. Leave a little bit of space in front of it, okay? Just 3. Then in my parentheses. And then 1 minus 4X. Again, right? So 3 times 1 is 3. 3 times negative 4x is negative 12x. Now, this is a critical point right now. I want, I want to point this out. Um, do not forget this. We factored out a 3, didn't we? Now, we had grouped these. We had split them, right? When you split them and you factor each one, you must put a symbol between them. You must put a plus or a minus. And in this case, we have a positive 3, don't we? So you need to put a plus 3 between. Now I'm going to I'm going to write I'm going to write this again below so it's nice and clean. I have y 1 minus 4x plus 3 times 1 minus 4x again. Now does that look familiar? That looks like your homework, right? Now what we have is what I just started class with. We have something that matches in both pieces. And so now that can be our new GCF, and we can pull that out. So we go, we take these, we notice that that's going to be our new GCF, 1 minus 4x. We pull that out front, 
and then I put a parenthesis, and I'll have two things that go in there. What are they? Y plus 3. So it's the Y that's missing here, and then the plus 3. And that is it. So you see, you have to do a little bit of work for grouping, right? With grouping, you actually do two little mini GCF problems, and then you put it together, and then you do one GCF at the end. Now, just to check to show that this is true, that this is correct, let me just show you. If I multiply this out, I go 1 times y, which would give me y. I go 1 times 3, which would give me positive 3. I go negative 4x times y, which is negative 4xy. And then I go negative 4x times 3, which is negative 12x. Does that match the original problem? Yes. It's in a different order, right? I've got y, though. I've got y. I've got a, a plus 3. I've got plus 3. I've got minus 4xy. I've got that right there. I've got minus 12x. It's right there. So that's the exact problem. It's rearranged. Yes. Well, in this class, yes. And in college algebra, same thing. There's ways you can do factoring using this sort of strategy on higher, like more terms, but the most you'll ever see in a college algebra class would be four terms. Once you get to like five terms, six terms, we have another strategy that we use in college algebra. It'll actually turn out to involve synthetic division. Some weird way synthetic division will come into play. So that's why we study it in this class. Okay, so th that seemed somewhat reasonable, grouping. Let's do another. All right, how about 4xy minus 3y minus 20x plus 15? Ooh, I'm glad that reminder came up. So look at that. First thing I want you to do is count your terms. How many terms do you have? Four. Now, just because you have four, that doesn't mean you're automatically going to grouping right now because there's something that you're going to do before you even try grouping, and that's what? See if you have a GCF to start the problem, right? Do we have a GCF right now? I'm talking about the entire expression right now. No, right? Not yet. Not until I do my grouping. But right now, I don't have a number that goes into all of these. I don't have x's in all my terms. I don't have y's in all my terms. So right now, I have no GCF. So four terms tells me I'm going to try grouping. So I'm going to slash it where? In the middle? Where? So right after the Y here? Okay. Looking at your first two terms, do you have a GCF in those two? Why? Pull that Y out. That should leave you with two things in parentheses. What are they? 4X and minus 3. All right. Here's where things can get a little bit tricky. What about the second two terms? Is there a number that goes into both of these? Five, right? Five? Now, don't write this down, but watch me, all right? If you pull a five out, what are you going to have here? Minus 4x plus 3, aren't you? Isn't that what you would have? And then I said you always have to put the sign in between. What would be the sign here? Well, hold on, hold on. It would be plus because we pulled a positive 5 out, right? Didn't we pull a positive 5? Y'all told me factor out of 5. Yeah, we're going to do that. I'm, just, I'm showing you that it matters here a little bit. I agree. This is true. Look, positive 5 times negative 4x is what? Negative 20x. Positive 5 times negative, I mean, times positive 3 is 15. So this is correct, but what's wrong with it? They don't match. Y'all see that? 
These two do not match. They're actually off by a sign. This one's positive 4x, this one's negative 4x. This one's negative 3, this one's positive 3. So even though 5 worked, what would have been better was instead to pull out a negative 5. Because the negative, by having a negative out here, we would be required to change all the signs inside. Okay, so, so let me erase this. That's why I said don't write that down. Let's think about this again. Think about if we pull out a negative 5 from both, that works, right? It's a GCF for both. So if I factor out a negative 5, I'm actually going to write negative 5 now. Pardon? Yes. Normally, like, when it's negative, it's natural to want to put the negative there, right? But when you pull out, like, 5, you don't naturally want to say, I pulled out a plus 5. The minus is more natural. You'll just put it there. Your sign will be there. You won't have to worry about it later. Okay, what do I multiply negative 5 by to get negative 20? x for plus 4x so just a 4x right then what do you multiply negative 5 by to get 15 you need a negative 3 right now they match don't they and so that's what we are going for so you see this example illustrates that you, you have to be a little careful on the GCF on these little separate grouping parts because you want things to match all right. So what would my next line be? Yeah, what would it be? 4x, 4x minus 3 is what you pulled out, and then y minus 5. Now, just in case, I, I think I heard someone, they wanted to say the y minus 5 first. You can actually write it that way. Okay. Both of these are acceptable, just switching them. The reason I do it this way is because that's the way I taught it, right? The GCF came out, and then these were the two pieces missing. This is uh, right, but it's just not the way I showed where it comes from. So, And, of course, you could check it, but I'll just leave it. Let me show you this same problem, a slightly different approach, okay? Just right underneath this. I've, seen, I've shown students this before, and they're like, yeah, I, I like that way better. I'm not trying to confuse you, although it might be inevitable. Okay, there's the same problem, right? So what we did is on the first one, we pulled a y out. We had 4x minus 3. Right? And then we were supposed to look over here and find a GCF. But here's the deal. For this to work, what must be here? What are we going to have to have in parentheses over here? A 4x minus 3. So some students like to say, let me try and make 4x minus 3 be here, and then ask myself what has to be out here. You know what I'm saying? Like, if, if this has to be 4x minus 3 to match this, then what do I have to put here so that when I multiply through, I get my negative 20? So what do I have to multiply 4x by to get negative 20x? negative 5, and what do I have to multiply negative 3 by to get 15? Negative 5, holy shit, it's the same number, good, that's my GCF. You know what I'm saying? Like, the, well, but if it was a positive, you might forget. That, that's the only thing, right? Like if it was positive 5, are you going to put plus 5? You may forget that. So just remember that no matter what, when it's all said and done, you always have to have a sign separating these two pieces, these two groupings. So... Either way, okay, questions? Do you all like that way or, you know? Um, trying to come up with something here. Let me find something in the book that's a little interesting. Oh, here's one. Six a x minus six a y minus x plus y. How many terms? Four. 
right? Four terms. So you're already thinking maybe grouping, but before I do that, I look for GCF. GCF throughout the entire thing. Numbers? No? A's? X's? Y's? Not in everything, right? Not in all four. So I don't have a GCF now, but maybe after I slash this thing, I'll be able to work with it. Where am I going to put my slash here? At right after the 6AY? Before that minus sign. What can you factor out of the first two? A and a 6, right? So 6A can come out of the first. What's left? X minus Y. You all agree? Now let's try the method I showed you just a second ago. Let me see if there's any way I can make an X minus Y appear here and try and determine what I'd have to multiply out here to make that up there happen. Negative 1. Good. Because what I need to do is I need to turn X into a negative X. I need to turn a negative Y into a positive Y, right? The only way to make those switch signs is to multiply by negative 1. So I put a minus 1 out front. So I have 6A times X minus Y minus 1 times X minus Y. And this becomes what? X minus Y in parentheses, right? And then in parentheses, 6A minus 1. Because, again, these two things matched. Do you see why I was saying last class why it's so important for you to understand this? Because it's just going to keep showing up in a lot of different places. Any questions? <clears throat> All right. Turn the screws a little bit more. Four AX minus twelve BX plus ten A minus thirty B. Oh wait, yeah. Let me make sure I got this right. Try it. And don't forget the steps. I'll start the sign-in sheet right here today. Okay, now how many of you realized that we had a GCF to start the problem? Right? Before the problem even started. And then how many of you went right to your slashing? I mean, you have to be careful here because if you do your slashing right now, because you, you just looked at it and said four terms, I'm going to do grouping, you missed the GCF in the very beginning. And that can be a little dangerous, all right? So looking at all these terms, do we have, do we have a number that goes into 4, 12, 10, and 30? 2. 2 is our greatest number that goes into all of them, right? So right now I have a GCF of 2. That two will come out. I need enough space here for how many things? Four things, right? I need to create four terms, and that two has to be out front. So, what are what are my uh, what are my terms inside this parenthesis? What do I multiply two by to get four ax? Two ax, okay. X one minus six bx plus five a. Minus 15B. Okay. So that's just our GCF of 2 coming out, right? Now we look back inside this parentheses, and we realize we have four terms in there, right? We already know we don't have a GCF. 
on those because we, we already pulled the GCF out. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to slash those, those things right there. Now be extremely careful because you have a two sitting out here, don't you? And a parentheses. So what, it, what might help you at this point is to do this. Write that to, use maybe a bracket instead of a parenthesis. That represents what you already had out here, right? That's what I already had. And now I'm going to work on this piece and this piece separately inside that bracket. What can I factor out of the first two terms? A 2x, right? A 2, because 2 goes into 2 and 6, and an x because they both have an x. So I can factor a 2x out. What's, in, what's inside here? I need enough for two things. So what? A minus B, right? Agreed? Now look over here. Uh, sorry, not A minus B. I'm at A minus 3B. We were going to have problems there. All right, A minus 3B. Now you, you all seem to like the idea that we used in the last two times. And I need to match that, don't I? So let me put that over here and see if I can match it up. I'm going to put an A minus 3, or A, yeah, minus 3B, put it here, and ask myself what would I have to have out in front. So to get A to become 5A, I need a 5. Good. Positive 5. Good. You remember the plus, right? And then 5 times negative 3B would give me negative 15B, and that'll work, right? So I'm going to put a 5 out here. And remember that I have to have a symbol between them, so plus 5. Does everyone see how I've written this, like how important it is to keep that 2 there separated from everything and, you know, put a bracket so you can kind of work within the bracket and, and not mix everything up? You'll see how I'm doing that? What does inside the green bracket become? A minus 3B. I'm looking at just in here, right? What happens in there? I'm ready to do that thing. They match, right? Match, match. Pull that out. There it is. I'll come in with the two on the outside of it after I'm done here. What's next to this? 2X plus 5. But all of that was sitting there with the 2 in front, wasn't it? Now, since we have multiplication, right, we have multiplication here in, in between, and we have multiplication here, the bracket is no longer necessary. The bracket was necessary before because we had a plus between them. So the two would have, like, distributed through to each one. So once you get to this point, you can just drop the brackets. It's not required, but if you look in the back of the book, your answer won't look exactly like theirs. But it wouldn't be, it would not be wrong to leave the bracket. How do y'all feel about this? You're just going to have to practice, right? You start getting good at it. Let me show you something else. Sorry, I'm thinking about this.
All right, so look at it four terms, right? Four terms, I'm thinking grouping, but first let me see if there's a GCF in this whole thing. GCF? No, no number goes in all those. There's not an X in every term. There's not a Y in every term. There's not an A in every term. So my only option at this point is to attempt to group. Where's my slash going to go? Right after the Y, right? Right after the Y. Anybody need to sign in still? Can I take anything out of the first two? A one, right? So not really, right? It doesn't have a GCF. So if it doesn't have a GCF, you're just going to write 5x minus y. What about the second one? An a, right? But weren't we trying to match? I thought y'all liked the matching way. Do y'all want to go back to the matching way? What do you want to do? You want to try and match it? What are we going to need to try and match over here? What do we have on the first one? 5x minus y. Can you make that happen? Can you turn 5x into this? Well, you can multiply by 3, but it would be hard to get rid of the 5 and turn it into a 3, right? Could you turn this negative y into negative ay? You can multiply it by A, right? You could. A would make that happen, but multiply this by A. Do you agree? So if I put a, a, an A out here, that would work. But that doesn't work for the first one, does it? Right? My first multiplication won't work. A times 5X is 5AX. That's not what I have. I have a 3AX. So A works for this one, but it doesn't work for that one. What that tells me is that this cannot be done by grouping. Now, the moral of the story here is students get this false impression that if they're trying to factor something and there's four terms, grouping is always going to work. But it does not always work. So I'm just going to put here grouping fails. So if things seem like they're not working correctly, it's probably because grouping doesn't actually work. Grouping fails. So we'd basically be stuck at this point. We wouldn't be able to go further. Um, you would just say something like prime or can't factor. Prime would be fine with me, even though technically saying prime isn't. I think prime for us is just going to mean I can't factor it. <laughs> you know, it's not factorable. But the, the, I won't be throwing things like that at you, okay? That's just to, just to make sure you understand that four terms, grouping is what we attempt, but it could fail. And I think I'm hopefully made that clear when I put the note up here or was it I said try grouping try it because it may not work all right all right I think that that's probably Good. What I'd like to do is give you two or three to work on. After you, we feel kind of okay with this, we're going to move into the next section. So why don't you try these? I'll give you one like very kind of basic one. X squared plus 3X plus XY plus 3Y. Let's just make it two problems so we don't eat too much time up here. And I'll give you a pretty good challenge problem here. 40... x squared minus 40xy minus 24x plus 24y.
It's a lot of homework. That's roughly one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's 12 factoring problems for homework just out of this section, okay? Yeah, you've got the weekend. What else are you going to do? Nothing, right? Okay, I'm going to pause the video so you can work on this. Okay, I think I'd like to work through the second one. So when you look at the second one, you try and find a, a GCF to start, right? So what about numbers? 40, 40, 24, 24. What is the largest number that goes into all of them? So you could start with two. Two goes in all of them, right? All right, so try something else bigger than two. How about four? Does four go into all of them? Four goes into 40 10 times. Four goes into this, what, six times? Okay, try something even bigger. Let's go six. Does six go in? Well, six doesn't go into 40, right? Seven. Seven doesn't go in. Eight. Eight goes into this five times. Eight goes into this three times. Then you can keep trying, nine, ten, and you eventually get to the point where you're convinced that eight is the biggest one. So eight's going to be my GCF. 8 comes out, I get 5x squared minus 5xy minus 3x plus 3y. All right? Okay, everyone agrees? Now, I'm going to slash this right after the 5xy. And on my next line, I'm going to use brackets instead of parentheses, just to keep my 8 out here nice and protected from all this junk inside. What can I factor out of the first two terms inside that parentheses? 5 and an x. That leaves me with x minus y, right? Now, I would like to match that over here, x minus y. Can you make that match? What do I have to multiply x by to get negative 3x? What do I have to multiply negative y by to get positive 3y? Negative 3. Right, because if that distributes through, we should get back those two terms up top. Is that all right? So we have our 8. We pull out that GCF which was x minus y, that's what matched. What's left was what's in front of them. And then I don't really need the brackets, right, anymore? And the final answer is up there on the board. Yes. Wait, you could put 5x minus 3 in front of x minus y, yes, as long as it's in parentheses. All right. Everyone got that homework assignment written down? Page 405, 69 through 95-odd. The GCF? Well, in the very beginning of the problem, we had a GCF of 8. And then we broke it up by grouping 2 and 2. GCF out of this was 5x. GCF out of this was a negative 3. So is that what you're referring to? Yeah, we had to do it two, two different places, on these and on these. OK, I would like to start 6.2. 
the, the title of this section is Factoring Special uh, Forms of Binomials, but I'm just going to put here Factoring Binomials. Whoa. Now let's just let's just kind of backtrack a little bit, think about what we can do so far. If somebody gives me some expression, I can try a GCF in the very beginning of the problem, right? No matter how many terms. I could have two terms, three terms, four terms, five terms, ten terms, a hundred terms. I can try and see if there's something common in all of them and pull them out, right? That's GCF. If there are four terms, I can try grouping, right? Now we're going to look at what if you have two terms. I know that doesn't seem like the right order. We should have maybe started with two terms, then go to three terms, and then four. But it turns out that starting with four makes two and three a little bit easier later. So that's why we start, did that order. So let's look at some, some uh, factoring of, of binomials, two terms. And here's what I'd like to show you. Um, Let's look at this problem right here. Oh, uh, make that a minus right there. Now, if you look at this right now, this is factored already. The reason it's we say it's factored is because there is a multiplication between those two things. So I'm actually starting with the answer in this problem and working to what it looks like when before it's factored, and then I'm going to teach you how to go backwards again. So if I said multiply that out, wouldn't you do x times x? That would give you x squared. Then you'd do x times negative 4, which would give you negative 4x. Then positive 4 times x, which would give you positive 4x and then 4 times negative 4, which would give you negative 16, right? Not negative 8, you're multiplying. What happens there in the middle, in those middle two terms? They cancel each other out, don't they? And all you're left with is x squared minus 16. Okay. Okay. Fine. Whatever. Try this. I'm going to do this one a little faster. x times x, x squared. x times negative 3, negative 3x. Three, 3 times x, positive 3x. Three, 3 times negative 3, minus 9. Middle terms, cancel. And you're left with x squared minus 9. Well, I'm not factoring. I'm just showing you this. What we're going to be starting our problems with is this and this, and we're going to somehow try and come up, come back to there. Okay? But I'm trying to get you to see a pattern right now. What about this? x plus y, x minus y. What would that be? Well, x times x is x squared. x times negative y is negative xy. y times positive x is positive yx or xy. It doesn't matter, right? I can put yx or, or xy here. The order doesn't matter. And then the last multiplication, positive y times negative y negative y squared. What happens to the middle two terms? They cancel. What are you left with? x squared minus y squared. What, notice, notice that in all of these problems, right, what we had, these two, x's were the same, right, xx, and then we had plus 4 and then take away 4. So they were opposite in sign, right? The next one we had x and x. Then we had plus 3, but then minus 3. 
So the, these two things were almost identical, right? Except one had a plus and one had a minus. And over here, our answer is always what? What does our answer on this side always turn into? It's whatever this is, right? Squared minus whatever this is squared. So like back up here, this x square it, you get x squared. This 3 you square it, you get 9. And there's a minus. Notice all of these have minuses between them, right? This brings us to a general formula for factoring binomials that look like this. It's called the difference of squares formula. I was just trying to get you to see the pattern. Difference of squares formula. I want to I want to copy what the book the, the book uses a's and b's instead of x's and y's. Here's what it says: If you have something a squared minus something else b squared that this will always factor to be a plus b a minus b if you have that that pattern in your problem then it's always going to be this that's this is the factored side this is the unfactored side That's the formula. Most of you have seen that before, maybe? So let's see how we could apply the difference of squares formula to a problem. If I gave you an example and I said factor x squared minus 100, well, you have your x is like your a, isn't it? And it's being squared. So that matches your formula exactly, right? x is really the a. But the 100 doesn't have a squared above it, does it? And in the formula, you have to have something squared. But 100 is what number squared? 10 squared. So I'm going to rewrite this as x squared minus 10 squared. And now... Your x is like your a, and your 10, right, is like your b. Your 10 is like your b. What about the minus? Well, I don't care about it. It's, it's in the formula, too, right? So I don't care about that. So what's a for us? x and what's b for us? 10. So according to the formula, I don't even have to think about anything or try and think about GCF or separating, I just have to identify what's A, what's B, and then plug it into the formula. So it should be X, what? Plus 10, X, minus 10, and we're done. The key to the using this formula is finding A, finding B. Yes? Yes, what do you mean just the 100? Like I did here? Like to do this? Yes. I'll give you another example. This one's going to be tricky. 9x squared minus... I won't be too cruel to start. Let's go minus 4. All right. I would like for us to try and, and, and be thinking big picture here. The first step for factoring anything, I like to say, is just a real quick mental note how many terms, too. So I'm already thinking maybe this might be a, a formula, the difference of squares formula. But I'm first always going to look for a what? GCF. Do you have a GCF in these two terms? No. So I don't have that. So I'm going to see if that follows the pattern of the difference of squares. So does that look like something squared? minus something squared. Yes? Okay, what, what's A here? What's A? Look, you have to be extremely careful. 
A is the thing being squared. So you don't say 9x squared. You just say what the thing down here is. It's not 9x. It's actually, what, what is this squared operating on right now? The squared is only on the x, right? In order to use the formula, your a, everything there has to have the squared on it. So watch what I'm going to do. This is going to be a little bit odd, but that's why I'm showing you. 9 is 3 squared, isn't it? So isn't this the same as 3 squared times x squared minus, and 4 is what? 2 squared? But isn't that the same as 3x squared minus, I'm going to put the 2 in parentheses just to show you how I'm working here. When you have squared on two things, isn't that the same as, do you remember this property when we had two things being multiplied in parentheses in a power, the power could go to both? I'm basically reversing that property. I'm taking the power on both and I'm bringing it to the outside. Now, you don't have to show all this detail. If, if you've got it mentally, I'm okay with that. But I'm just trying to help everyone see that But that saying nine, that A is 9X here is not going to work. Whatever's here, whatever A is, has to be squared, the whole thing squared. So it has to be a 3X. D does that make sense? Okay, now the 4 is just 2 squared, so our B is what? 2. So I'm going to write down underneath this. This is A. This is B. And now just plug into the formula. A plus B times A minus B. 3X plus 2, 3X minus 2. Box it, you're done. And we said last class, the good news about factoring is that you can always check your answer. What's 3X times 3X? 9X squared. Well, that's good because I'm supposed to have 9X squared, right? What's 3X times negative 2? negative 6x. What's 2 times 3x? Positive 6x. Those two things cancel. What's 2 times negative 2? Negative 4. There you go. Do you see why if you would have put 9x here, it wouldn't have worked? 9x times 9x would have been 81x squared. You would have been way off. Okay, let's do another one. Factor this. So you look at it, you're being told to factor Real quick, two terms. I'm thinking difference of squares formula, but I always have to look GCF first, right? Do you have a GCF? Five. Yes, you do. Right? Which is actually good because, look, if you sit here right now and you don't think GCF and you just say, I'm going to try difference of squares right now, five is not a perfect square, is it? It's not like 9 and 4 and 81 and 100. So you'd struggle to try and figure out how you could rewrite 5 as something squared. And you would have trouble figuring out the same thing for 125. However, if we pull the GCF first, which was 5, what's left in there? x squared minus 25y squared, right? 5 times 25, or negative 25 is is a ne negative 125. Now focus all your attention on what's in the parentheses. I have two terms in there, right? It looks like I have subtraction between them, so it looks like a difference. Does it look like a difference of two squares? Well, x squared, x squared is x squared, right? So in that one, a is pretty clear, isn't it? What about this one? The squared is only on the y right now. I need to make it be on everything. So how can I rewrite 25y squared to be something squared? Put in parentheses, but what's in that? 5y. Right, so I'm going to rewrite this underneath. I 
I don't know if this helps you or hurts you to, to put the X in parentheses too. It, it's, it's just trying to stress that all you're trying to do is get two things being squared and subtraction between them. If you can get that, you're ready to go. What's A for us here? X. What's B? 5Y. So we should have, according to the formula, don't forget, we have the 5 sitting out here. But then those, the difference of squares formula gives me two sets of parentheses. It's A plus B times A minus B. So it should be for us, X plus 5Y, X minus 5Y. Box it up. One more. One more, we'll call it a day, all right? Yes. Sure. Hmm. Just wondering how bad we want to be here. Um, let's go x cubed plus 3x squared minus 4x minus 12. What's the first thought you had here, other than I don't like this? How many terms, right? Four, which automatically makes me start thinking grouping, right? And then I start, you know, I look for GCF. I mean, maybe if you want to say you always want to look for GCF first, that's fine. But I, I always just look at what I have, and I know I have four terms, right? So do I have a GCF in all these right now? No. No, I don't. So since I don't have a GCF and I have four terms, I'm going to try grouping. So I put my slash right after the, the x squared, right? What can you factor out of the first two terms? x squared. What would be left? x. That's all right. Plus 3. Remember, if you have two terms and you pull something out, you have to have two terms in, in that parentheses. Now, I want to match that up, don't I? So what would I have to have out in front of this to match this up? Negative 4, right, will work. And that's because negative 4 times x is negative 4x, and negative 4 times positive 3 is negative 12. You all good with that? Okay, now what does that turn into? x plus 3 times x squared minus 4. And normally we would be done at this point, right? However, what is that? That's a difference of squares. Look at x squared plus 4. I mean minus 4, right? Isn't that the same as x squared minus what squared? 2 squared? Isn't that the same? I wrote that kind of small, but that's what that is, right? So this falls right into the formula for difference of squares. So that should turn into two sets of parentheses, shouldn't it? So x plus 3 is still out here. Now two sets of parentheses. The formula says a plus b times a minus b. So for us, A is what? X. So I have X. Shoot, I'll put them both there. And then I have what's B? 2, so I do plus 2. And I do minus 2. Now everything is factored out. 
So that was an example of a problem that started out with four terms. We had to do grouping on it to get it down to this, then recognize that one of those was a difference of squares, which required another, set of, another step of grouping, I mean, another step of factoring by using that formula. You could check your answer. What you would have to do is take these two, multiply them together. If you do that, you get x squared minus 2x plus 2x minus 4. The two terms cancel in the middle, you get x squared minus 4. Now, sitting in front of that was x plus 3, right? So now I multiply that through x cubed minus 4x. Uh, now the 3, so plus 3x squared, and now 3 to here, negative 12. And that should match what we had, right? So you'd actually have to do two of these together first and then come through with the third one. Oh, it doesn't matter. I always do these two because then I, that's in the front, and then that comes through. But you could have done these two, right? If you do those two, you well, I won't do it. But you, Okay, everyone. Um, I would like to give you just a few of these just to practice so you don't, you don't go home and not have anything from this section. We're just, just barely touching 6.2 here. There's actually going to turn out to be three formulas. There's called difference of squares formula, sum of cubes formula, and a difference cubes formula. And so we're, we're only just barely tip of iceberg here. Um, I want you to do on page 412, Eleven thirteen seventeen nineteen and see how you do with twenty three. I'm circling it because it might be a little bit weird, but just do your best. Look, I was very close today. I mean I, I, I woke up this morning and I just kinda rolled out of bed and I went I'm going to give a quiz today in my 0302 class. Like, I was just going to give a quiz over the homework. But then I decided not to. But I really think it's time that, that at least for this grouping, I mean, not grouping, factoring, I would like to have a quiz every day, beginning of class, over your homework, one problem, maybe two, just to make sure you are doing your homework and you understand what we did before. Okay. So if you do your homework, and next class you come in and you look at it before class, make sure you kind of understand everything, then you'll be okay on this quiz. Yes? Yeah, the other homework, I'll, I'll bring it up. That's it right there. That's both of them. Everyone have a great weekend.